And then I thought, you know what, Noel, it is quarter to five on a Friday afternoon. You're the last person. Like, they've already picked out. They just want to cover their bases. So I just said, oh, screw it. I'm just going to have fun. Noel McNeil is an actor and puppeteer who is best known for his role in one of Disney's most successful children's programs, Bear in the Big Blue House. And today we are talking about how he got his start as a puppeteer and his tips for getting in the industry. So let's start chatting to Noel McNeil. Noel McNeil, thanks very much for joining me. Now, you're known for Bear in the Big Blue House. And what I loved about Bear was he was just this nice, calm and caring presence. And every episode, he would sniff the camera. So first of, how did you get Bear in the Big Blue House? And was it your decision for him to be able to sniff the camera? Um, Actually, with Bear, Bear was uh, created by uh, Mitchell Kriegman, he was brought in by the Jim Henson Company because, and uh, here's a little bit of trivia, is the fact that um, once upon a time, Jim Henson and Michael Eisner made this deal to have Disney buy the Muppets. Unfortunately, Jim died. And so the deal was amended so that the Hensons would create three projects for Disney for TV. The first project was the primetime series you might have heard of called Dinosaurs. The second one was another sitcom for ABC. It was called Alien in the Family. And it didn't last very long. So then the, it was time to, to uh, finish the agreement with a third project. And rather than do something for the primetime uh, slot, they thought, let's develop a show for the new kid division of Disney Channel, which was going to be called Playhouse Disney. And so they brought in Mitchell and he went through the files at Henson and discovered some notes about, about a house and um, these animals that lived in the house. The house kind of had like its own personality. And so it evolved from that. So then I um, actually got a call to audition for uh, a game show with this big kind of like character. And I went and auditioned for that one morning. And then I came home and I was like, didn't think any more about it. And then I got a call from Henson saying, no, could you come back? Because there's this other character we want you to audition for. And I was like, okay. So they uh, faxed me a picture and the, the script. Yes, kids, I use the word fax, Google it. And I, looked, I got into a cab and rode down to the shop. And um, I was looking at the picture. I was looking at the, the script. And I was like, oh, this looks cute. It was a picture of this, this drawing of this bear and all these little animals around him and this really big image of the moon smiling at all of them. It's like, oh, okay, this is cute. And so I went in. And as soon as I walked in the door, Peter Van Roden, who was an executive there, met me at the door and said, immediately, use your own voice. I was, What? I said, but we're the Muppets. We don't do that. He's like, no, no, no. Use your own voice. And the theory was that at that time, there was another very big character um, who would walk around and had sort of a voice that was, you know, always telling you, I love you. And so they wanted to steer from that. They also had, through the course of the day, people who came in and just did this big old kind of bear boy, I am a bear, kind of this gruff voice. And so they wanted to do something different. So at that point, I was like the last person. They said, just use your own voice. And I thought, okay. So before I became a parent, I would have this voice. I kind of called my Uncle Noel mode where I would go and visit friends who had kids. And the Uncle Noel mode was pretty much like walking in, like whatever they wanted to do, whatever game they wanted to make up, like, Let's go for it. And so I had that in mind. I got inside uh, the prototype, which is like the understructure, because there was a like a, the understructure was kind of like made of netting and hoops that you would kind of have in hoop skirts. And then the fur would be put on top, but it was just the understructure right now and a foam head. And I got inside, like, wow, this feels really comfortable. In fact, it felt really fun to like walk around and run around. <clears throat> and then I thought, you know what, Noel, it is quarter to five on a Friday afternoon. 
you're the last person. Like they've already picked out. They just want to cover their bases. So I just said, oh, screw it. I'm just going to have fun. And so the, the script said at one point that he, he uh, smells something and realized it's the viewer. And so that's when um, Bear stops and he kind of like sniffs around. And then he looks at the camera. He's supposed to say, it's you. Well, that's when I decided I'm just going to have fun. And so I went up to the camera and I jammed his nose all the way into the lens until I covered it and then pulled it out and then did it again. And there was another time in the script where he held up a glass of water. So I held the, the glass of water so close that you could see Bear's face like through the glass on the other side. And I just like... <clears throat> would occasionally try and slip into a character voice. Like, no, 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 keep using your own voice. Like, okay. I kept doing it. And then after that, it was like done. And I said, bye. And said, thank you. And I never thought about it again. That's the secret kids. Like when you go do an audition, always, forget, always have fun and then forget it ever happened. And then that Monday, because it was a Friday, that Monday, just before six o'clock, I got a phone call from Henson saying, no, we want you to be bare. And I was like, what? And yeah, that's how, that's how it happened. And with um, the show, we did like something like 116 episodes. And the thing that always helped me keep it fresh was that it was perfect because we always would um, start a show by their opening of the door. And so for me, just as they, they counted down, I put my hand on the doorknob and I would think on the other side, and I, it's something I always teach other puppeteers who are going to television, um, is that that is not a camera. That is a kid who is watching you for the very first time. And they have never seen you, your character. They have never seen the show. And so you are introducing this new kid to this world. And so every time I opened the door, that's what I was thinking. That was a kid out there who had never seen the show before. And so it was that one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction that I wanted and kept it fresh. And also um, a secret, again, that my mom told, taught me because she had taken acting lessons, is that um, you, if you smile, it helps whatever you're saying. Like, and so inside with Bear, I'm always like smiling and just making it genuine that he is glad to see you and he really is glad that you stopped by and you really do smell good so those were the like the little things that helped me like keep bare fresh it was funny though that when i started to do personal appearances like at um disney stores or parades or at the, the white house easter egg roll bear would meet kids and so it became i called it the santa claus syndrome where meaning that Bear couldn't ask what your name was because he knew you because he smelled you. <laughs> so it would always be like, oh, I was hoping you would come here today. Oh, you made it. Oh, it's you. And then the parents would say, this is Amanda. And say, of course I know it's Amanda. It's like, I knew you smelled familiar. And just like go on from there and just make it as, as personable as, as, as possible. So <laughs> look, that's, that's amazing. But how much could you actually see when you actually were in the bear suit, how much could you actually see like where you were going? Did you have like like a like a monitor or something you could actually see where you were going when you were in the suit? Um, for the show, um, I had what Carol Spinney had um, in Big Bird and still does to this day is that um, it's this, I call it the Big Bird technology in that you have a tiny little TV set, a monitor about the size of your palm strapped to your chest with a microphone on top. So you're looking down. So what you saw at home is what I saw. And the image that I see on the monitor for TV puppetry, for all TV puppeteers, it's not a mirror image. Because in the mirror, if you raise your like right arm, that in the mirror, that same side raises its right, it, it's, its arm. But on TV, it's flipped. So if you raise your right arm, when you look down, it looks like the left arm is going up. And so that's how you, uh, you just train yourself. Um, Jim said that you couldn't like depend upon um, a show to 
be able to flip it, an image to, to make a mirror because that would take too much time and time is money on TV production. So you just get trained to like do it the proper way. And so that's what I had. So it was backwards and I couldn't see out. So I would have to kind of like feel my way around the house, like if, especially in the foyer with my feet. So if you go back and watch an episode, of, you'll notice in the foyer, there was like a rug on the floor and there were these thresholds for the kitchen doorway and the living room doorway. So that with my feet, I could feel where I was, even though I couldn't see my feet all the time. And I could very gently like back up and I could then feel the banister of the staircase behind me and then just turn and like walk upstairs. It's almost like if you were suddenly blind in your own home, the first day um, I got to the studio early and I walked around the house. Actually we had a rehearsal kind of before that like day before. And so I just got used to like walking around like especially the foyer with my eyes closed and just like feeling what it felt like, like on my feet and kind of judging like where the staircase was and how many stairs and how many steps it is from the front door back to the, to the banister. So when I started doing personal appearances outside of the show, like on um, the Hollywood squares um, and other TV shows and also for parades and also for um, children's hospitals, the Henson uh, shop, who are wizards and artists, they came up with this camera in the eye. So it's this tiny little lipstick camera that was embedded into Bear's left eye. And then the other eye had a matching glint. So then I suddenly, especially if I was on TV, suddenly I would have two monitors strapped to my chest. One showing me what you would see at home and the other showing me what Bear saw. And basically if you, take your like left hand and make a circle and like put it up to your, close your right eye and put it up to your left eye. You're kind of like almost looking through like this makeshift telescope. Like that's the, the vision I had. And so at least it was something. And so I could actually uh, use that, especially going to like um, hospitals and uh, children's centers. Cause whenever I did appearances on these shows or for parades, I always asked would there be opportunity to go to a children's hospital. And so that really helps because then Bear could actually walk around and actually walk in and out of um, the rooms and down the halls. And so that's how I was able to see eventually. Yeah, but look, that, that's amazing how, you know, you were able to get in that suit, be able to, um, you know, make sure that you could see and have a monitor and things like that. It's amazing how the show managed to work. Now, I've actually seen in other interviews that you've done, you've actually got a your own puppet of Bear in the Big Blue House. Is that right? I do. Yes. It was made by uh, my friend, uh, James Voitall Jr., who uh, is a whiz at making puppets. And uh, he's actually one of the people who made um, a Bear's head. And so it came about because uh, our mutual friend, Paul McGinnis and Haley Jenkins, who are puppeteers, uh, Haley's on this, she's a star of this brand new show here in the States, it's called Don Quixote. And you can probably go to YouTube and see scenes of it before it gets to Australia. And they were getting married a few years ago. And Haley had been a puppeteer for uh, Disney World for the uh, Bear the Big Blue House live on stage show that was at the Disney MGM studios and our voices were recorded and her and the puppeteers would lip sync to it and she always loved the puppets and she loved the show and for the reception Paul wanted to surprise her by having myself and co-stars Peter Lentz and Tyler Bunch sing the love um the, the song uh love is um I think it's just called love from um the love episode of Bear. And so I thought, oh yeah, that'd be great. We'd love to do it. And then I thought, it's kind of weird having three guys just standing up there doing these weird voices. Like maybe we could do something more. And so I thought I'll make uh, puppets. So I made makeshift pick and pop puppets for Peter and Tyler. And then I wanted to make a bear for me. And I found this fur online 
that was like pretty close to the colors and I got it and I started and then when it came I started that day like texting James like okay uh, I got the fur like what do I do and he would tell me and it's like okay what do I do next and what do I do next until it finally got to the point he was like no just it's like just send me the damn fur just 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 send it I'll do it myself <laughs> I was like oh okay so I sent it, everything to him then I, a couple of weeks later at the wedding I get a knock at the my hotel room and James is there with this bag and he presents it to me and I open it up and it's something I could never have done in my wildest dreams. It was just beautiful. And it was kind of like, it looked just like Bear, if Bear had gotten stuck in the dryer and like shrank. So it was like, just like shrunk down because the, the real Bear puppet was one that I was inside. I wore it, it was a body puppet. So this is a puppet of a puppet, which is very meta. And so I've, uh, I've used though, I've used him for um, appearances at uh, Comic Cons, which I'm so anxious to get back to next year. Um, um, and I'm also, so we've been using him on uh, TikTok because during the lockdown last year, um, my son said, who is 16 going on 42, he said, Dad, you should go on TikTok. And I said, What's a TikTok? And after a 30 second patronizing explanation from a teenager, he, he said, and you should use your bear puppet. I was like, why? I was like, because millennials, millennials grew up on bear. They'd love it. I was like, okay. And I thought, well, it's something to do while we're here. So I signed up and I did a video just introducing like myself and bear and we're going to be on TikTok and we're going to do videos and have fun. And I was gobsmacked at the reaction that people got seeing this character suddenly again. And through the pandemic we would um we bear and i we would put up videos there was like one um last june where um so many kids were going to miss their graduations from high school and from college and so i made a little mortarboard and a little graduation outfit for bear and with the graduation pomps and circumstances playing in the background and him congratulating the graduates of 2020 and the reaction of people the emojis of like tears streaming down. My son has always said, if we had a dollar for every time someone used the word childhood, we could buy our own island at this point. Yeah. <laughs> because like, thank you for my childhood. Oh, you were my child. You're the best part of my childhood. Oh, my childhood is complete now. Oh, you, you helped me begin my childhood. Now you're helping me begin adulthood. It was just like, it's just been amazing and humbling that these people still resonate with this character and last on a Christmas day of last year, I went live for an hour on Christmas day with bear just because so many people couldn't be with their families and just wanted to like um, answer questions. And we sang a couple of songs and just to make sure people had like, you know, a Merry Christmas, or if you don't celebrate at least a nice day off. And we've been putting up little videos. In fact, um, I was just telling you, Darcy, that uh, a fellow Aussie, Troy Murphy, who's a puppeteer, he um, has been doing this Halloween countdown, and he's invited puppeteer friends of his to uh, have the puppets come and visit uh, the afterlife. And so he asked me if I wanted to do it. I said, sure. And I thought, well, I really don't want to give the impression that Bear is dead. <laughs> so uh, I came up with this. I thought rather clever solution is that Bear is dressed up like Doctor Strange and he's borrowed the the Eye of Agamotto. So this way you can go and visit, but then you have to get back. And so it's on TikTok and it's on um, Instagram right now. So if you want to go, go see it. And then I did one, I've done like greetings for people on uh, Cameo and Memo. And there's a new one that I'm joining now called Thrills where Bear will wish someone you love like happy <clears throat> happy birthday or happy anniversary or congratulations or words of encouragement um, because adulting is hard, <laughs> but this past year and change has really tested 
all of our limits. So the fact that this character is now back for all these kids who've grown up, and that's the other thing. So many requests now are saying that they're going to introduce their kid to Bear. So that's how old the show is. In fact, October of 2022, next year, in fact, a year from now, is the 25th anniversary of the show. And so, yes, so things will be happening. Absolutely. <laughs> do you actually have the puppet on hand with you there? Can you actually go and grab it? Do you, do you have the puppet? Uh, yeah, just give me one second. Through the magic of editing, it will look seamless. Yep, absolutely. Seamless. Through the magic of editing, we'll seamless <laughs> cut this out. Through the magic of editing, here is the puppet. Here is Bear. Hello, Darcy. Hello, How are you? Bear. How are you today? <laughs> I am doing good. How are you? Good. I hear you've been talking with Noel here, so I hope he's hasn't been chewing your ear off too much. Now, I have been talking with Noel, and he's been talking about how everybody loves you, and even today, how you, you live on, and how the messages of what you did so long ago now, even people today are loving Bear in the Big Blue House still to this day. Stop. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> so what I thought we'd do to finish off, to maybe do something a little bit fun, since we've got you here, I've got uh, Noel and I've got Bear in the Big Blue House. Would we be able to do our best a cappella of the goodbye song? Yes, absolutely. Do you still remember the words? I still remember the words all to this day. So why don't you start and I'll join okay. in. I'll do Luna's part. You can do Bear's hey, part. Yo. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> hey, this was really fun. We hope you liked it too. Seems like we've just begun when, when suddenly, suddenly we're, we're through. through. Goodbye, goodbye, good friends, goodbye. And now, now it's time, time to go. go. But hey, I say, well, that's okay. Because we'll see you very soon, I know. Very soon, I know. Goodbye, 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 good, good friends, goodbye. goodbye. And tomorrow, tomorrow just, just like today, the moon, the bear, and the big blue house will be waiting for you to come and play. To come and play. To come and play. Bye now. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. How good was that? Now, Noel, before I let you go, for anyone who wants to get into the industry, anyone who wants to get into uh, puppetry, uh, how would they go about doing that? And is there any particular new projects that you're working on today that you uh, want anyone to know about? Um, well, one thing, um, one way to get in puppetry is to contact your local, like, you know, community theater or um, theater because they might have like a production that might need uh, a puppeteer. Uh, you can also uh, go uh, online and you can get a used copy of Noel's uh, book, 10 Minute Puppets, that's available uh, used on like uh, Amazon. And there's all kind of tips and suggestions of how to make puppets there. And uh, let's see, um, what else? Oh, what's he working on? Well, Noel actually doing the lockdown he did this podcast called Noel's Book Nook, which is available on Apple and Anchor and Google Podcasts. And you can listen to Noel, who kind of sounds like a certain bear, reading stories and chapters. In fact, this month for Halloween, there's chapters from Frankenstein, from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and the poem, The Spider and the Fly. So he has many things. He's also been, if I don't mind bragging, he's also been directing for Sesame Street. Remember that little show he was talking about? Well, he's done YouTube channel segments for Sesame Street, which you can check out. There was um, the Wheels on the Bus fire truck, um, Animals on the Farm with Sesame, and also the Wheels on the Bus with Grover driving. And he's also going to be directing a segment on the actual street this December. So he has many little things like planned. And also a couple of things that you can't, can we talk about? Now, we can't talk about certain things. There's some surprises coming up. But 2022 is going to be a very interesting year. Pause okay. crossed. Pause crossed. Well, Noel, well, Bear, thank you very much for 
taking the time to join me. It's been great to learn about your career, about how you got into where you are, also about Bear in the Big Blue House as well. It's been an absolute privilege. So thank you both for taking the time to join me. Thank you, Darcy. Oh, and by the way, you are still smelling really good. <laughs>